trip to China, but I also want to give you the answers. Master Shantanu finds it necessary to go into feelings and find the self-existent nature of feelings forced upon us by reminding us to find the emptiness of feelings through this thing called the Four Deep Awarenesses. Okay? And the first one we covered over and over, the emptiness of the body, you already understand, right? Uh, is your body self-existently a body? Is the physical matter of you that? Which is heat number one, the answer is no. So if, how to apply? If you are in a situation that you're about to have a strong emotion, so um, I use the angry boss example because that's one that worked for me, right? Um, recalling that you are not self-existent with this kind of Hector might help you, yeah? The next one, which we'll cover in some depth, uh, may, no, we won't, uh, is <laughs> Master Shandemi goes, okay, what about your feelings? What about these feelings you're having towards your boss? And Cliff quite rightly said, you can divide feelings into three, <coughs> which are pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. Or there's also a division of five, which is, for some reason, they've missed the neutral, but physically positive, physically negative, and then the three mental ones. So people divide them into that. Do they have a nature of their own? What are the three mental ones? Huh? What are the three mental ones? Three. Pleasure, neutral, pain. Um, just want to make sure. Okay, so we did them. He covers these, and then there's the emptiness of your mind, which is three, four, and five, mental heat, and then the emptiness of objects, like flower we cover, right? These are the four awarenesses. Remember, is your, is, are you made up physically of or the way you think you are? Is the heap of feeling, the thing that forces you to have these um, outbursts back at your angry boss, is that self-existently thus? What about all the other mental stuff, and what about the boss itself, right? So remembering these four and knowing how to analyze them will help you. So let's go for the body, which we did over and over. And they put he put these instances in the text. You can see it in the root text. I'll just put it up there. You have to come to these realizations yourself with all the analysis we've already done. And so he says, you decide, you establish through meditation, practice, study, you establish that the whole body and its parts and the components have no self-nature from their own side, number one, yeah? So you've done the exercise, you say, I'll buy it, but then you've got to establish it as a certainty. Secondly, he says, therefore, it's wrong to feel attached to this thing, right? Don't embarrass this Hector body in front of all the other employees, right? <laughs> because it's just like a dream, yeah. okay? The way I conceive of this me, yeah, it's just like a dream. Now, does that mean I don't exist at all? No. Right? We've got to clarify that, otherwise we become hippies, yeah? I love hippies, yeah? <laughs> but when I say hippies, I mean we go into La La Land, and some of us like going into La La Land that is non-functional, yeah, because it's convenient. <laughs> it's easier than actually seeing reality for what it is. Don't think you don't exist. Yeah? You are a projection forced upon you by your karma. You are empty of having that nature. And it functions. I've said it over and over. Put the projected you, the, the arising you, the, the one that you are projected, put that in front of the projected taxi and let that run over your projected legs and then go to the projected hospital and get projectedly treated and pay for the projected bill <laughs> if you don't have insurance, right? Functions. It doesn't mean... <laughs> uh, projected insurance. Projected. <laughs> the newly projected national insurance, yes? <laughs> can you just project that you have insurance? You can, <laughs> you can. <laughs> what I'm saying is don't go into La La Land because, you know, we find words like it's like a dream in Buddhism. It's like, oh, it's like a dream. I'm going to do anything I want. No. Okay. 
Uh, and then lastly, so this is in the text, it goes, once you've established that and you know you shouldn't be attached to this thing, uh, then step one and two uh, show that I don't have any self-nature either. Okay? We did that. Let's do it for feeling. And now I've got to give you stuff. Okay? He puts an assertion out for us to remember that this is what we have to do. Right? Number one, when you're having a feeling about the angry boss, deny that this feeling itself has a nature of its own. Yeah? That, and so he uses an example here of saying, assuming that cookies are self-existently yummy, right? they give you pleasure. So the feeling of pleasure comes from cookies. Yeah? So he's like, we all think that, right? Because cookies are awesome. Okay. So imagine a woman who's grieving over the loss of her only child if feelings had the nature of their own and they existed in pleasurable cookies when you push the cookie in her face she must feel pleasure at that time and that's impossible right so that's the logic he uses to say feelings that that nature of pleasure isn't there there's isn't a feeling coming with the cookie yeah and then the same for pain he says for pain, I'm not sure, that's what question four and five are in your quiz. The one for pain, he says <coughs> that if it were pain, whatever it is that's giving you pain from its own side, it would never change to not pain, right? Proving that it's empty of pain, it's empty of having a nature of its own. So that's what that is. And then he says, well, once you've denied that feelings have a nature of their own, what about the three things that come together to make the three causes of feeling. And he says, to have the three causes of feelings are the outside object you perceive, cookie, yeah? This is not a cookie, but this is yummy. Um, the sense object, the, the sense power, the, what do you call them? The taste buds. Taste buds, yeah, we have an eye consciousness, a tongue consciousness, Itself, right? The sense power and the mind that projects onto it yumminess. If the if we can prove that those three things are empty, then surely this is empty too. Does that make sense? Then the causes of feeling are empty. Does that make sense? So let's call this ice cream, right? And find the yummy nature of ice cream. Is it sitting here in the object? We established that before. Does it? No? If it's flour, it can give you allergies. No. What about the sense powers? Does that, do taste buds taste from their own side? Do they have a nature of being taste buds only? Careful here, yeah? I didn't like Master Shen or the explanation in the commentary. But you have to chew it. Do ta are taste buds self-existent? I used to not like mushrooms, but now I do. You combine all three. You combine mushrooms, putting it in your mouth, and liking it or disliking it. He's going, the causes of the feeling, he's going, we understand mushrooms don't have a nature of their own. What about the taste buds? Do you mean their function? Hmm? Do you mean their function? Do taste buds, are taste buds taste? Yeah, let's go their function, the capacity to taste. You sure? Yeah, I didn't like that answer. I'm like, oh. the explanation was because you die and they disappear and they go away. Therefore, they cause so they don't have a self nature. Oh. I was thinking that, yeah. but I thought that would be wrong. And then I no, that's actually the answer. I was. It wasn't sitting right with me. But, but, but if the physical body then disintegrates and the taste buds are, are part, part of the physical yeah. body, then they just live out the life cycle of the physical body. So yeah, which means they're not self existently a taste bud. Right. Or capacity to taste because they change. I mean, it's kind of, you could go it's a more practical level and say, like, when you're sick and they don't really work. Awesome. That's nice. I like that better. Can you tell Master Shanti Deva to change? Master Shanti Deva. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. And lastly is the mind that perceives it, right? And we've established the emptiness of the mind. Subjects of the mind. So, established, we deny that the feeling itself has a nature of its own. We deny that the causes, the things that make us have feelings, have any nature of their own, which is proved it. And we deny that the object, the thing 
uh, focusing has any nature of its own. Yeah? Understanding this in the moment while the boss is yelling at you can at the very least stop you from, like it can free you. For, for <laughs> my first example, my first experience of this was learning this and going, I can use something in the moment to change the angry boss dynamic. Yeah? And it can have immediate application, Geshe Michael told me at the time, like I can't wait to change that. Right? I was a little retarded. So I, I meaning retardation from the literal point of view, like slow to come, like, slow, yeah? But it still worked for me. The slowness that I had to apply is, my mind went to some kind of ice cream brain freeze, because, you know, I'm like, I've got to think of the emptiness of the body, and I've got to think of the emptiness of the boss and the screaming and the causes of the feelings that I'm having. And I was so lost in that that I wasn't even listening to him, right? But it was enough for me not to yell back or to even pay attention to whatever he was yelling, which made him yell longer sometimes. And then you begin to actually investigate that I am having a sensation and it's too late, I've already vomited out a response. Yeah? But when you get that, if I do a response, it's loading the projector, it can really help you. Yeah? That my mind does not have to interpret that that way. Once you've habituated that way of thinking, then yelling becomes a trigger for me entering a state of understanding the emptiness of yelling. And that was useful in the moment in a way that nothing else was up until that point, but I had to get up to that point through the retarded part. Yeah? So chew on that. And lastly, is there lastly or not? Yeah. Yeah. We deny that the mind, oh, I just covered that, right? Is that what I covered? Yeah. The object, oh, sorry, and the subject. That the boss didn't have a nature of its own, and then that my mind interpreting the boss didn't have a nature of its own. So if you catch those four, you can establish the emptiness of feelings. Cool? Then, I'm not going to cover this. I'll do it next class. <coughs> this is, do you know who that is? Nagarjuna. Yep, Nagarjuna. Let's go away from that. That's when you huh? Next class. <laughs> yeah, I'll cover it next class. That's enough. That's Stephen jumping off Mustang. Yeah, that's the same thing. Now, ready for China? That's the end of class. Yay! Yay! Okay. Yay. <laughs> okay. Are we dedicating or are we we'll dedicate after because this is part of the. Yeah? Yay! I okay. I so, this was the Grand Master Pro. Uh, yes, please stop it. What do you want?